We've seen so amazing things, but now, my friends, this is something we've never seen. Brandon Cruz wants advice. Brandon Cruz wants advice. Brandon wants advice. Brandon Cruz wants advice. You can just locked yourself into the playoffs. Nice. I got it. Call with old Brandon Cruz wants advice. Completely speechless, to say the least. Man, I am honestly so baffled by that decision. Brandon Cruz wants advice. It's Brandon wants advice. Green flag in the air. Brandon Cruz wants advice to the front. How are you guys doing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? This is the Brandon Cruz Daily Fantasy Podcast coming at you for the Bristol Motor Speedway Cup Series race this Saturday night. I am recording this following final practice because I just won't have any other time to make any other thing for Bristol. I work tonight, going to be home very late. I like legit. Like I know I yawn in some videos. I know I'm going to be beat tonight. Not going to make. Not going to be able to make it tonight. Not going to be able to make one in the morning. Um, just won't have time. Got other things going on, so we're just going to have to deal with this. Good thing is inspection is in the morning, so hopefully 18 people will fill inspection, and it'll just avoid everybody's podcast uh, following qualifying. Um, but really, I'm just going to be looking at facts and fantasy entering this weekend, practice speeds following right now, and, and DFS lineup construction. By that, I mean like what I'm looking for in my lineup, regardless of how people qualify. So so that that's my little that's my little shindig, my little index. Let's get right into it. First off, man, the amount of drama that has happened in this community in the last 48 hours is astonishing. First off, you got Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to kill himself. Then you got people telling Cody Ware to literally kill himself. And then you got Nally Decker just being a woman. Uh, it's it, it it's it's pretty wild. Um, Cody Ware, oh good lord. Um, when when De Benedetto announced his retirement, people were like, oh, why aren't there more quality rides and blah blah blah. And then I guess people started picking on Cody Ware because um, Cody Ware is just not that good statistically, even though he's been in underfunded equipment. And people are like, "Why are you even in the Cup Series, Cody Ware?" Get, like, it's people like you taking good rides, or blah 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 blah. And um, just the whole drama between some fans and, and Cody Ware happened there. And then uh, I had I got a buddy who's a Truck Series driver on Facebook, and, and I basically like posted about it in a group, and he was like, "Well." Uh, Cody Ware accused DiBenedetto of cheating on his wife, like, in 2017. And so there's, like, a huge drama going on there. Uh, Cody Ware was not helping himself. He was calling NASCAR fans assholes, and they're the worst. And then he was like, I'm blocking my Twitter. I ain't posting anything. So, so Cody Ware did that. Um, and obviously everybody knows about good old um, Alan Kowicki's airplane crash this past weekend. You know what, I, you know what I'm talking about. Um... But yeah, Junior walked away, his kid, you know, everyone's alright, so I don't really give a fuck about that. Uh, since everyone's alright, it's not it's not really drama if everyone walks away, okay, you know what I mean? Uh, and then, moving on, uh, Nally Decker, if you guys haven't heard the audio from Nally Decker, I would highly advise go find I was going to put it on here before, like sometimes I, I throw things before the video, but I don't got time to find it, just go look it up, it's on, uh, I believe it's like Frixie Nixon, um channel he's he's a nascar related content uh creator and things of that nature but it's it's pretty it's a damn good look listen uh nally decker's a dumbass and talentless and blah 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 blah. okay so facts looking at um this race coming uh looking at bristol and things of that nature let me bring it up i just i thought i had organized my bad here we are so um looking at the quote-unquote facts sheet uh, for the best pro shops in our in our a night race, you know, um, I'm looking at drivers like active drivers and all that type of stuff. So, uh, most Bristol races. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Best average finish among active drivers. That's what I was trying to find. So, the, uh, best average finish among active drivers. Now, this includes a career start. So, three or more starts here. So, it's it's Elliot. At 12.4, Stenhouse at 13, Johnson at 13.1, Kevin Harvick at 13.2, Kyle Busch 13.8, Soares at 14.0, Kurt Busch at 14.3, Clinton Boyer 14.3, Eric Jones 14.8, and Denny Hamlin 14.9. Now, why am I focusing on this stuff here? Well, I believe that Bristol is one of the last few remaining racetracks that you can actually kind of use a driver's history to at least see how they are and what and and how it is. I mean, Bristol, granted. They've raced on the top, they've raced on the bottom now, and they're trying to 
fix the fucked up top lane by putting that traction compound on the bottom. But you know, Bristol's Bristol. That that's just how it goes. It it's still it's still close. It it's still a hard hard battling. Uh, just a little little racetrack, you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, Kurt Busch dominated this some bitch in the early 2000s with, and he he's got six wins and 37 career starts. Kyle Busch is second off of that uh, on active drivers with eight wins, and then you got um, Logano, Harvick, Keselowski tied with two, Denny Hamlin with one. Um, Looking at averages and people who are consistent, Harvick has been by far the most consistent and at least getting in the top 10. Uh, followed that by Kurt Busch, and then followed that by Kyle Busch. I just want to bring that up based on history. All right, now moving on to actual statistics related to the last six races here at Bristol Motor Speedway. So in the last six races, based on, you know... This is based more on points, but I'm going to go on, at least list I have, regardless, disregard that. Um, last six races here at Bristol, these are the statistics. So you got Jimmy Johnson with five top fives. He's the most consistent the last six times we've been here. Ironically, he was not very good here in his, at the start of his career, and he needs to run well this week to get in the chase or get in the playoffs, whatever you're calling it now. Um, Jimmy Johnson, I think if people see that, he he might actually be popular this weekend. I like Jimmy Johnson every week except when he's popular. Popular Jimmy Johnson is not good. <laughs> oh man, that is not what I want to see here at all for fantasy purposes. Secondly, uh person who's who's been damn consistent is is Logano. Five top fives, three top tens in this span. Uh Kevin Harvick f- uh five top fives two top or five top tens two top fives one win johnson also has a win i forgot to mention that um and then you got larson with four top fives two t- or with four top tens two top fives hamlin with four top tens three top fives clint borey with four top tens one top five uh and then you got kyle bush with three wins three top fives and three top tens so he's boom or bust basically uh, which is pretty easy uh, to figure that out. Then you got Ryan Newman, three top tens. That's what you want to see. Kurt Busch, three top tens, three top fives, one win. Stenhouse, three top tens, three top fives, uh, two top fives, zero wins. Blaney, three top tens, one top five, zero wins. Uh, Alex Bowman, two top tens, one top five. And that's pretty much the notable guys here based on the last six races to see, like, you know, where they finish consistency or consistently and all that type of stuff. And I'll, I'll circle back to this when I'm focusing on lineup construction and how I'm approaching this weekend. Okay, now looking at practice speeds here. I got practice one up. Now, I don't give a shit about the fastest lap time. I don't give a fuck if they're in a qualifying run. I am starting my research here, practice speeds looking at 10 lap averages. I mean, you can look at 5 lap averages because everyone's pretty much done a top 5, but if we're going to find people who are consistent that we want to look at, we can do top 10, or or 10 lap averages. Now, people also did 15, 20, 25 lap, and 30 lap averages. I understand that, but for the sake of of looking at who's consistent with the most amount of people running this, I'm I'm looking at 10 lap averages. Lagana was first in the first practice, uh, in 10 lap averages, followed by DiBenedetto, Bush, Elliott, Jones, Hemrick, Suarez, Bowman, Byron, and Almarola. What does that tell us right here? Well, that shows that Logano is going to be fast. Right now, Logano is my, my pick to win the pole and win the race. That could change. I'll, I'll talk about that more. But Logano is stupid quick. DiBenedetto is fast. He's always been fast here, especially in the Levine Family Racing 95 car. Now, obviously, everyone knows he's not going to be there anymore. I'm not really sure how it's going to affect him. I'm not really, I don't really care one way or another how he's feeling. Uh, he's stupid fast. If there's a chalky De Benedetto and a chalky Jimmy Johnson, I want to be as far away from them as possible. But De Benedetto is showing speed. Kyle Busch, third fastest here, about you know a tenth, maybe a t- about a tenth and a half off of Logano's averages, and then. Chase Elliott, just Chase Elliott here. He's been consistent here. He usually does well. Eric Jones is standing out to me. Daniel Hemrick standing out to me here. I, that's good for me. I always like playing Hemrick. If he just shows me this, I'm happy with that. 
Um, other people that stand out to me, Boyer, he was 12 fastest on the 10 lap averages. A lot of people are pissed at Boyer for wrecking last weekend. I can understand that. Typically when that happens, people jump off a guy, they got burned. I mean, you got fucked. He finished dead last last week. You're like 37th or something. Like, if you played Boyer, you got screwed. Um, but, you know, I like Boyer here. As I said, he's 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 got some pretty good stats on his last six races with four top tens here. Uh, that's the type of stuff you want to look for. Uh, the reason I'm looking towards that is because look at these practice speeds. I'm going to go on to 10-lap averages. Um, I'm not going to include Quinn Hoff in the 27 just because that car is really, really underfunded. But let's use Landon Castle for an example. On his 10-lap average on the first practice, his was a 15.882. That was his average speed or his average lap time. Now, if you compare that with who was the fastest at Logano at a 15.14, that's eight tenths different. Basically, a second. Let's just call it a second difference here. There's going to be a lot of lap cars here. It happened last time they raced here this year, and it's happened more in the past because I, I don't really know why. I, Bristol's always been bad with lap cars, but this last time, I think there's like 11 or 10 left on the lead lap. I suppose I could go back and look at it. Um, but, you know, I, I expect anywhere between, you know, 14 to 11 cars to be on the lead lap at the end of this race. I want to try and find those 14 cars. That's all I'm concerned about. I don't want I don't want to have someone who's one lap down. I don't want to have someone battling for a lucky dog position in my lineups. I want people who are fast. This is showing how fast the leader is, or the fastest car, at least in this session, was to the slowest car. And even if you go down from Logano being the quickest 10-lap average in the first practice to Eric Amarola being 10th fastest, uh, or Logano being first, Eric Amarola being 10th, Logano was a 15.1. Eric Amarola is a 15.4. That's just 10. That's 10 positions different, but that's three tenths of a second. I mean, the speeds here are wild. The fastest cars are gonna pull away from the field, gonna lap people like crazy. That's what's standing out to me right now. Um, a lot of the big do big boys, uh, Martin Truex Jr., Harvick, Hamlin. Kozlowski, a lot of those guys didn't do anything longer than six laps in the first practice, so we're just not going to focus on them. I assume that they're, you know, stretching the car out, seeing how it's going. Now, the vast majority of a field did their 10-lap, 15-lap averages in the final practice. We did uh, have Ryan Blaney lose his power steering in this, and then Brad Kozlowski was also saying he was feeling kind of weird, feeling something weird in the car, you know. We'll see how it goes. I, I typically don't really care a whole lot about that type of stuff when it's team-related, but this one kind of irks me. The last time I felt that way was, I think it was like Atlanta or Vegas this year. Sometime, sometime earlier in the year when the Joe Gibbs cars were just blowing tires left and right in this one race. Um, I'm getting that feeling here. I don't really... I. Logano ran damn near 100 laps in final practice. He didn't have any issues. <sighs> I feel like Penske's gonna look it over. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fall. I'm not gonna be worried about any power steering issues, any mechanical failures for Penske. I'm just gonna push through it. Not worry about it. If it takes me out, it takes me out. Um, Blighting was fastest on 10 lap speed and 15 lap speed. Uh, 10 lap speed. Logano was fifth fastest, and then he was second fastest in 15 lap speed. I, I I don't think Blaine is going to be as fast. They're going to change something with the car. It's not going to be the same. I just don't believe in it. Uh, DeBedetto showing speed again. He was third fastest, 10 lap average in the final practice. Eric Jones, second fastest, 10 lap averages in the final practice. And then 15 lap averages, DeBedetto was third, and Eric Jones was ninth. And then you go to 20 lap averages, and Logano was first, Blaney second, DeBedetto was sixth. And I don't believe Eric Jones ran. Yeah, so the two, two people who are staying the most consistent: the Benedetto, Logano, uh, Harvick. Ten lap averages was seventh. Fifteen lap Harvick was sixth. Twenty lap Harvick was fifth, and twenty-five lap Harvick was third. 
and 17 people did run a 25 lap average. So it shows that Harvick is at least, he's not dumb fast, but he's at least staying consistent. And Harvick actually only loses about, he only loses about three hundredths every five laps. That's not too bad. He doesn't have, that's not a bad fall off at all, really. Logano is a bit more severe. Ooh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Logano loses his huge part. He loses about 500s between 15 lap and 20 lap averages. But Logano is staying. Never mind, that was the better. Uh, Logano is staying right on par with Kevin Harvick. I really like Logano. I like Kevin Harvick a lot here. I like Kevin Harvick as a sleeper. Don't think a lot of people are going to be on him. Um, Hemrick might be the lowest guy I go to. Hemrick keeps. I keep playing Hemrick no matter what happens. He keeps not doing good, but you know he's there. <sighs> Fuck, man. Don't like Priest. Don't like Dylan. I would like Stenhouse if he's showing more speed. Don't like Reagan. Except this is Reagan's last race here, basically. Uh, Wallace, no, I've played Wallace here before. He he does all right. But I think he'll start too far back. He just won't be able to go anywhere. He's not showing the bit of speed that he showed. Uh, not last time, but last year when he finished. I think he finished like in the top 10. So he's not showing that practice speed here. Michael McDowell, no. Jimmy Johnson, ah, man, he's 19th fastest. 10 lap average is not, not big into him. Clint Boyer, he's 18th. 10 lap averages, but I would lean on Boyer's consistency here. He likes this track. Kyle Busch is Kyle Busch. You know, he's going to be good here regardless. Like I said, Hemrick, 16th fastest 10 lap averages. Larson was 15th, 10 lap averages. People, let's see. Menard showing some good speed. He was he was 12 fastest 10 lap averages. Menard actually does pretty well at this track, really. Um, he hasn't had a whole lot of top 10s, but he is damn consistent. He has... In the last six races, starting from 2016 to 32nd, 16th, 16th, 13th, 36th, and 6th. And he, when he, he typically qualifies, he's going to either be in the top, he's going to be inside the top 10 or outside the top 20. If he's outside the top 20, I'll go with him. If he's inside the top 10, I'm not going to go with Menard there. And man, that, that's, that's it based on practice speeds. I like Logano. Don't like the Benedetto, because people are going to be on him. Don't like Jones, because people are going to be on him. I like Denny Hamlin. I like Harvick. I want to say I like Suarez, but I think he might overqualify. I like Menard. I like Newman. I like Hemrick. I like Kyle Busch. I like Boyer. I think that's about it, really. Everybody else I don't see really in play. I don't know what I just named off there. Maybe about 8, 10 guys or something like that. I'm sure I'm going to have to play people that I don't really feel comfortable with. But those are the guys that stand out to me that I, that I do like right now. Uh, line of construction. Let me talk about this right fast. All right, so. The pricing. I don't understand the pricing a whole lot this week on DraftKings. i got to try and hurry up because i got to get this done. I'm kind of kind of run over my time limit that I gave myself for this, uh, but I don't really like the pricing that NASCAR has for the lower guys down here. I'm going to start from the bottom, moving up. Uh, also, JJ Yaley is sponsored by Slayer and Nuclear Blast Records. Fuck yeah, go Slayer. Uh, JJ's 4,900. I don't really like him a whole lot here. He's not showing a lot of speed, but I, I just like his car. Um, Man, the pricing under 7200 Actually, whatever, I'll just keep going up, actually. Um, Wallace is 5700 He might be the best, the safest punt, just because I like him. I'd actually probably prefer to go with Ty Dillon um, if I was going to choose someone to go with down here. I'm not sure if I could fit him in, but I, I like Ty Dillon based on price here. Uh, not on really practice speed. Same thing, I can say the same thing with Priest. Menard, $6,200. I feel like people would go Menard more than Hemrick. 
more than Stenhouse. Um, and Henrik and Stenhouse are going to be on an island because people are going to jump. People, oh my dog's coughing over there. People are going to jump on either De Benedetto or Menard, based on pricing here, based on lineup construction. And so Henrik and Stenhouse are going to be lower owned. Um, if people go with Johnson, Byron's going to be low owned. Suarez, Busher, Dylan are a little bit too expensive. They're in a weird range because Almirola is seventy eight hundred dollars. Now, granted, Almirola has not had the his has not had the season that he started with, but really seventy eight hundred dollars for Eric Almirola. What what is going on here? That he's way too cheap. Newman is is eight thousand based on consistency, but. You know, Eric Amaral is a better driver. He, he's in better equipment, and he's going to finish. He, heads up, Newman Al Almarola, I take Amaral any day. Same thing matters with Boyer. Boyer is $8,200. If there's a place to play Boyer, it's at Bristol. He's consistent here. I just went over all that. Alex Bowman, $8,400. You know, that that's where, like, Almarola should be. Uh, Ryan Blaine at $8,600. If he qualifies well, if they get it, if they if 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 they fix everything, Ryan Blaney starts in the pole. You throw in Ryan Blaney in your lineup, you're you're good to go there. I'd I'd rather go with Blaney than Jones based on pricing. Blaney's cheaper, and I would figure that he leads more than Jones would. Not wild on Larson, Kurt Busch. I think this is more based on history because he's $9,500 here. I. I don't understand that at all. Um, his recent finishes does not promote that price increase at all. So they're probably looking at his history here, things of that nature. Um, Chase Elliott, nine eight hundred dollars here as well. Just I don't I don't really understand that. Ha Hamlin just because he just because Hamlin has been he's finished top five the last month basically. Ten thousand seven hundred people are going to be hesitant to play him. That's why I like Hamlin here. Kozlowski, Truex, Harvick, and Bush are where they should be. We'll let qualifying sort that out there. Um, just the pricing is weird. The eight to six thousand is just strange. There's if oh man, I don't know. I got to see how people qualify. I feel like Boyer's going to be low owned because how he did last week. Hamlin's going to be low owned because based on his price increase. <sighs> Damn it, Hamrick's going to be low owned because he's Hamrick. Johnson and Byron and Suarez. Suarez is going to be low owned for sure. No one believes in Suarez. Even I'm hesitant to do that. But if he starts tenth, I might I might go with Suarez as a as a place to, or as a uh, as a pivot. Same with Almirola. This is where it's going to be won or lost. This section right here. We got to see how qualifying goes. Depending on who your dominator is, but this is where the section is going to be won or lost in GPPs, the eight thousand to six thousand dollar range. Who you go with, who who's not owned, and who's going to do well. Austin Dillon, the same thing. Austin Dillon is not showing speed at all. I don't think he'll qualify very well, but I think he'll finish right where he finishes, or right pretty much around where he starts. busher has been fast here in the past, seventy four hundred dollars. I think he should be a bit higher. But like I said, we got to see where everyone qualifies. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. I apologize that I'm not getting this out after qualifying, but that's just how it's going to be. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Tweet at me on Twitter. Do that type of stuff. I am, I'll hear, I'm here. Uh, I'll at least text and, and answer, every, or I'll at least message and, and all that stuff at work and when I'm home and all that type of stuff. I will help you out there. I got a Patreon in the description if you'd like to support me. If not, you know, go right ahead. No one, no one's ever supported me before. You're, you're fine continuing to not do it. Um, uh, but I do have my Twitter down there if you want to follow me, keep up. I usually post when I'm going live. If there's any updates, things that I find interesting, uh, DFS related, I usually post on my Twitter, so you might want to keep up with me there. And uh, guys, thank you very much for listening. I will talk to you guys later. Have a fantastic day. Enjoy the race. It's going to be a good one. And uh, peace out.